Hey, it's Jamie from Not So Wimpy Teacher, and today let's chat about a routine for teaching all of those grammar skills. Okay, grammar is a tough one. There are so many different skills and standards for students to memorize and learn, and I found that the lesson planning and prep for all of these grammar standards was really time consuming. Every week I was searching for new activities. Oh, it's verbs week, now I gotta go on Pinterest and TPT and Google and look for verbs activities. And then I'd have to print and prep them and teach my students how to use them. And then the next week it's, it's adjectives, gotta go find some new activities. I realized I was wasting so much time because I didn't have a routine. When you have a routine, every Monday we do the same thing, every Tuesday we do the same thing, then it becomes so much easier to prep and share the expectations with your students. And so I wanted to share with you the routine that I ended up using. I tried multiple and I had to just keep learning what was working, what was not. It was super important to me that the routine was easy for me to implement, that it was engaging for my students and that my students were actually learning and remembering the grammar skills. Those were kind of, that was my criteria for this routine. So I'm gonna share with you what we did each week during grammar. We didn't change this up very much at all throughout the year. So my students got really used to it. Okay, every Monday was our mini lesson. I always used a PowerPoint for this mini lesson. I would share the skill we were going to learn for that week, any vocabulary they needed to know about that skill, and any rules, because there's always rules for them to memorize. So it's really my introduction lesson where I'm going to teach them about the skill. Now to keep this fun and entertaining for my students, engaging for my students, is there was always pair share questions, things they repeated after me, or questions they answered to their partners, which made it a lot more engaging. That was Monday. PowerPoint mini lesson introduced the skill. Then every Tuesday, we did an interactive notebook activity. My students loved this. They loved the physical act of getting to cut, glue, put it in their notebook. They're creating something and they take pride in that. It does not have to take a long time. You can train your students to cut fast and you can look for activities that have straight, simple cuts, not cutting around a bunch of cute clip art. The interactive notebook activity was a great opportunity for them to be practicing and recording any rules from the PowerPoint lesson. It's, it's a chance to just start putting it into action. And they're creating a resource they can go back to over and over again throughout the year, which is really important because all of these grammar skills build upon each other. If you're still struggling with nouns and verbs, then adjectives and adverbs are gonna be even harder. So you need to be able to go back and review. So Tuesday was all about the interactive notebook. Wednesday was writing, writing Wednesday. This did not replace my writing workshop. You know I'm a huge proponent of the writing workshop. This was just a simple 10 minutes, because that's how long I spent on grammar, that we would spend responding to a short, simple prompt, but using that week's grammar skill in our prompt. It was important to me that my students were seeing how grammar was a part of writing. That's why we're learning it. So if we were doing plural nouns, for instance, they might have a simple prompt where they needed to explain the things that they keep in their backpack. And so they're going to write a couple sentences about what someone might find inside their backpack, but they must use some plural nouns. And so this is how my students are learning why we're bothering with grammar and they're starting to implement it in their writing. That was Wednesday. On Thursday, we always did a task card scoot. It's kind of a tie between interactive notebooks and task cards, which one my students love the most, but I think they really did enjoy the task cards. So the task cards were only about that week's skill. It was very focused. And I would just lay the task cards around the classroom. You don't have to have one for every student or anything perfect like that. They would take their recording sheet and you can put it on a clipboard or just carry it on a book and walk around the classroom. I always told them to answer the question closest to them first and then to move around and answer them. It doesn't have to be in numerical order, but rather more like which one's closest to them. I didn't set a timer for each card because this allows for differentiation. Some of my students are only gonna get through 10 of the task cards. And it's probably because they're going back to their interactive notebook to look at the rules and, and it's just gonna take them a little longer and that's okay. Whereas others of my students are gonna finish all 24 of the task cards during the time. 
And I, I love that built-in differentiation for my students. And in fact, the cards would get more challenging. And so students who did them all would have the opportunity to get more challenging questions. And that was Thursday, the task cards. I love that they were out of their seats. I know that, you know, during pandemic, getting kids out of their seats, it's iffy. But I believe we're headed back to a classroom where we can get up and move around. And so I hope that that becomes part of the routine again. Then every Friday was an assessment. It's important that I assess my students and find out how well they're doing with this week's skill. Are we ready to move on? Or are we gonna move on, but still need to just occasionally review this? Are there just a few students I need to pull back and work with? Um, this was really important. Plus I was required to put a grade in the grade book too. So a quick assessment. This does not need to be really long. I liked about 10 questions. It was easy to grade percentage wise. It was a half a sheet of paper and it would take my students about five minutes to complete, which is a serious bonus for me in the classroom because there's never enough minutes. And then we'd start all over the next week with a new skill. And so here's the routine. Monday, the mini lesson PowerPoint. Tuesday, the interactive notebook. Wednesday is our writing. Thursday is our task card scoot. And Friday is our assessment. Now I've put together a professional development training all about how I taught grammar and the grammar routine. I've even included a pacing guide and a sample PowerPoint lesson for you. So make sure you grab my grammar professional development. It's amazing. I think it's going to help you and it's totally free. Yeah, free. So I'm going to put a link in the description to this video. Make sure you grab that and make sure you are subscribed to this channel because we're adding videos all the time and I want to make sure you have all the tips and tricks to make teaching just a little bit easier. Have a not so wimpy day.